offensive lines matter. Hashtag it, put it on Twitter. It's why we went through the best offensive lines in yesterday's video and how that impacts running backs in fantasy football. Today we are flipping the script and talking about the worst offensive lines in the NFL. They're going to cause these running backs to bust, man. They matter. It matters who you're running behind because very little matters when it comes to running backs and their success on the ground. The yards per carry, again, vary so minimally that these are the things that that push them forward. These are the difference between 800, 800 rushing yards and 1050 rushing yards, right? What holes do the offensive lines open up? How many extra yards do they push forward for you? And how much easier does it make your life, okay? And because you're here in July, your idiot league mates aren't. Okay, so they're not going to know about these six running backs, seven running backs, eight running backs that we talk about today that have shit offensive lines that you need to stay away from. If you missed yesterday's video, we'll link it down below. Make sure you go watch that either now or afterwards, and we'll be putting out videos like this every single day of the summer. So make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you don't hate the video, and it is time to tuck. I need to stop yelling. Let's see. Quick reminder, our season-long draft guide goes live on August 1st. August 1st, all right? It's up on bdge.co, but the easiest and the least expensive way, the, by far the least expensive way to get it is by going to prizepicks.com or hitting the link down below that takes you to prize picks and using the promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more for the first time, you will get access to our draft guide. You will get an email 24-ish hours later that gives you access to the site and you could log on with the email that you use to sign up for prize picks. It'll have our offensive line rankings and analysis with it. It'll have our rankings just for your regular drafts. You know, the top 200 big board. It'll have our must draft players, our official fade list for the year. All the shit that we've been doing all off season in our videos will be in encapsulated into thy draft guide prizepicks.com promo code bdge let's talk about josh jacobs and the las vegas raiders they are currently ranked 30th right now going into the year and as i said yesterday basically the way we concocted the offensive line rankings i did a whole lot of research for this i went through basically every uh site on the interwebs to find the rankings of the offensive lines going into this year so we're talking about pff we're talking about fade the noise pro football network lineups.com fantasy pro like all of these ones you know and i read and digested all the information that they had on these and then we came up with our rankings based on that so the las vegas raiders 30th ranked offensive line Josh Jacobs has become an extremely, extremely tough sell this offseason. I liked him going into the year. I thought he was like an underrated player where now that he's finally dropping to like the sixth round of drafts, we like the value. But as the offseason has gone on and my research has gotten a little bit more tailored, it's tough, man. It's a tough sell, especially, especially after Charles Robinson, a uh, beat reporter, came out yesterday one day into the Raiders training camp and he said, six quick and very early thoughts on the Raiders uh, after spending Day one at their camp Thursday, you know, he went down some bullet points that weren't really effective for fantasy, but number six, health permitting running back is going to be exactly what you think it will end up being a situational committee. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the position get entirely revamped next offseason. If you hate how the Patriots use backs, look away it will be similar. Uh, Josh McDaniels is now the head coach over there. So coming from New England, that makes a little bit of sense. And in the same thread, he basically talked about how the offensive line is a worry for the coaches. Like the coaches came out and said that we know the offensive line is going to struggle. Therefore, we are tailoring our offense to be a quick hitting, short throw, you know, easy routes, easy separation early at the line of scrimmage type offense. They know that the offensive line stinks, which is going to be a problem for Josh Jacobs, who is an early down runner. If you look at the offensive line, they used, you know, their first round pick last year on Alex Leatherwood. If only someone had told him that was a really bad idea. He graded out as the second worst guard in the NFL last year. Now he is a tackle and they plan on moving him to the tackle position, I believe this offseason. So maybe things get better, but it wasn't a good sign how he started his career last year. Uh, Richie Incognito retired, which doesn't really matter at this point. Colton Miller is really, really good, but the rest of the line is absolutely in shambles. I think like Jacobs might make sense if you're going to go with like David Montgomery or something, who we'll talk about later in the video, and you can get Jacobs like two rounds later. That might be like a pivot, but as of right now, Josh Jacobs has kind of lost my interest entirely in drafting this man. Derrick Henry is also getting to be a really hard sell in the middle of the first round because the Tennessee Titans are 29th in the NFL in terms of their offensive line ranking all right so henry took over as the guy in this backfield in 2018 and since then they have ranked their offensive line ninth sixth fifth and last year 11th in run blocking per pfs pretty damn good this offseason 
Roger Saffold moved over to the Bills. David Questenberry, also gone, who started every single game for them last year. Taylor Luan just ain't been it since he came back from the ACL tear. There's rumors that he was a cut candidate at this point in the offseason. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. But ultimately, like their decision to kind of let their offensive line go to free fall, letting Jack Conklin walk a couple of years ago, and then trying to replace him with Isaiah Wilson, who ends up being a bust, like it just set their offensive line back massively. And if you're worried at all about Derrick Henry being on the decline, he's not, you know, as perfectly explosive as he used to be. Uh, this becomes a problem for him, man. I still think he's a first round pick in fantasy football. You know, the, the Titans are going to let him eat like he's fucking Eddie Lacy out there and he'll get carry after carry after carry. But the lanes won't be as wide for him to take off and hit those 60 yard runs. He's still, you know, a guy who creates on his own, of course. But again, if you're worried about the decline of Henry, him being old him being a little bit less explosive, this does not help whatsoever. So what I'm saying is not fade Henry entirely, but don't even mention him in the same tier as Jonathan Taylor and C-Mac and even these top tier wide receivers. I'm not usually a wide receiver guy, but it's easily Cub, Jefferson, etc. over a guy like Derrick Henry right now. The offensive line is about to go into absolute free fall. We already knew that the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line you know, blocking for Najee Harris was in free fall, 28th ranked offensive line. It's why I don't really love Najee this year, because people look at what he did last year. And is he going to be the three down workhorse? Yes, he is. But you can't just look at it and say like, oh, he's due for positive regression in his rushing efficiency. It's like, no, he's not because the offensive line stinks. He's not a big play guy. He doesn't have breakaway runs. He had 307 carries last year. Four of them went for over 20 yards. His breakaway run rate of 15 plus yard runs 2.5 percent was outside of the top 40 running back and again like i've I, you know i've talked about this so much this offseason but he had that one big game against cincy in terms of pass catching stuff where he had 19 targets and 14 catches which was like 20 percent of his entire workload for the year in the passing game that stuff's not really like repeatable do i think he still gets like 60 to 65 targets yeah and that's really good but that's kind of what carried him last year in terms of half PPR and PPR points. Now you have Mitch Trubisky probably starting for them as a mobile quarterback, which hurts any sort of pass catching running back. They had Calvin Austin to the mix. They had George Pickens to the mix, and he's still running behind a really, really, really bad offensive line. The efficiency, I, th I think we'll see a similar year to what Najee Harris did last year with a little bit of scaled back pass catching workload, which would drop him down to probably like RB8, RB9, which means I don't want to pick him like 6th, 7th overall in my fantasy drafts. James Conner is a guy that continues to move down my rankings for 2022. And again, all of my rankings will be available in the season-long draft guide, which goes live on August 1st, bdge.co, prizepicks.com, use promo code BDGE, and uh, that'll get you access to the entire website. So the Arizona Cardinals offensive line is really bad. They're they're like a bottom five, you know, 28th, 27th, 26th in that range. And you say like, oh, James Conner was really good last year, despite also having a bad offensive line. He wasn't. He was horribly inefficient, guys. Like the only thing he did well was score on the goal line. 3.7 yards per carry, which was his career low by far. His 3.6 true yards per carry ranks 62nd among NFL running backs, okay? His run blocking rating, meaning like how well the offensive line did while he was the one getting carries, 56th among NFL backs. It doesn't look like it's going to improve this year, right? The story of their offensive line is that they're just old as shit. Like their average age of offensive linemen is over 30 years old and... For the most part, if you look at all those guys individually and their performance year over year over year, most of them are on the decline. So this is a team where I think by the end of this upcoming year, we could see them step back from like 26, 27th to 31st, 32nd. Look at them as one of the, if not the worst offensive line in the NFL. They're not horrible as pass catchers, but each of them individually ranks really, really low in terms of run blocking, all right? So again, there's very little to like about James Conner this year outside of him getting a lot of goal line work. I'm not really trying to bank on him scoring 12 plus touchdowns on the goal line again this year. If you want to, cool. Uh, I just, it feels a lot like, you know, the Todd Gurley of the Atlanta Falcons from 2020. He needs to keep slipping down draft boards as does David Montgomery, man. I mean, y'all know the offensive line for the Bears is really, really bad. They're dead last. They are dead last across basically every single fucking website that I looked at. And it makes DeMont like a really, really tough sell. You have a bad offense. You have a bad offensive line. They ranked 27th in scoring last year. Uh, they got a new coaching staff who I'm, I put good money on that Khalil Herbert's going to continue to eat into David Montgomery's workload. It's bad out there for David Montgomery. The, the dude just has no ceiling, realistically. Um, this offense makes damn sure of that, as does the Seattle Seahawks offense with Kenneth Walker. Here's the thing, man. It's like, I've been yelling about Kenneth Walker all offseason. Since the day he got fucking drafted, I was like, he's an easy fade in redraft leagues. And basically everything has continued to push down that path more and more. It's like the reports. Uh, the starting job is Rashad Penny's to lose. Next week, reports. 
the third down job is either Travis Homer or DJ Dallas is to lose. At this point, I'm asking, like, what job is Kenneth Walker's to lose? What job does he have in this fucking offense besides, like, a change of pace breather back that'll have a couple exciting plays a game? I, I really don't know. It's based on reports, like, that's the most likely scenario. The problem is, like, best case scenario, you want to just throw all that out because you're so invested in his talent. Cool. He shows up to train camp, performs like Michael fucking Jordan, and they have no choice but to throw this man into the starting role. I don't even know if that's enough to make me want him in fantasy. It ain't going to happen, first of all, because they want to use all these other guys in these other roles. But like, even if he does, it, it's a bad offensive line, 31st in the NFL, really bad offensive line, really slow offense, really you know poor quarterback play. They're not going to move the ball on offense, no scoring upside. He doesn't catch passes. People in Pete Carroll's offense don't catch passes. It's just gross. So just fucking stop. And one last team we need to talk about here because we got a lot of comments about it. Last video, yesterday's video, and you know, don't forget to go watch that. And uh, I think they're worth talking about because there's a lot of moving parts here. And it is the Miami Dolphins. Okay, so a lot of people, you know, see a few of the signings that they made and assume that they are now one of the you know highest ranked offensive lines in the NFL, or at least like top 10, top 12. They're still pretty damn far off from that. Okay, Miami was so bad. On the offensive line last year, they ranked dead last in pass blocking per PFF. They were 30th in run blocking. Now, they went out and signed Connor Williams from Dallas, and obviously they grabbed Teron Armstead from uh, the Saints to be their you know, key left tackle. He got five years between 75 and 87 million, big guarantee. So it's a big, big signing for them. Listen, it's an extremely high upside gamble for the Dolphins, right? And you gamble on players like that that can be your cornerstone left tackle. When healthy, Armstead is amongst the best in the league at, like, at what he does. But the guy's been in the league since 2013, and he's never played a full season. And he's on, on average, he has missed 5.3 games per season. On average, he's missing a third of the season every time he steps on the fucking field, okay? Regardless of that, right, we can, I have no idea if he's going to fucking injure. No one does. Almost every single website still had the Dolphins ranked, even with these upgrades, 20th to 25th. Most teams do not just take an incredible fucking swing from 32nd all the way up to fucking nine because of one signing. A couple signings, yes, they're starting to pile on. I still think they're a year away from being in that top 15, top 12. They're going in the right direction, but let's not act like, you know, they're fucking offensive line is bulletproof let's not act like they're the chargers who the chargers have been building up for three years on this offensive line the jets the Bengals, they've all been like building up in this direction in order to make their offensive line go from liability to asset miami's going in that direction they still have a long way to go so i think it's going to be a little bit similar to the raiders right and i don't think this should be a surprise where the offense because they are lacking on the offensive line is going to run uh is going to be running through a very you know quick pace short pass get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly right terry kill obviously mike mcdaniel coming over it makes sense with hill and waddle and i think that's why i like chase edmonds a lot i don't really see any running back in miami having a ton of success on the ground like i don't see chase edmonds getting 25 touches a game where he's getting 18 carries and fucking four goal line carries a game very hard to see that happening i could see chase edmonds I, miles gaskin last year was top 10 in running back targets chase edmonds can easily see you know 60 65 targets targets in an offense that's going to do this. You know, that's kind of why I like Chase Edmonds. That's why I think he's a great ninth, 10th round pick. Uh, the offensive line is not something that is an asset for him. I just think people should understand that. I think they're a year away from being an actual asset to this team. This is very similar to like the Bengals last year where people are like, the offensive line is going to be so much better. They still were bad last year. But the upgrades this year, building on top of the little bit of success they had will swing things around for them. And we talked about the Bengals and Joe Mixon in yesterday's video again. So make sure you go check that out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. Hit the thumbs up button. Drop some comments. Let me know what teams you want to know the rankings for, and I will drop them down below. But most importantly, go cop the draft guide at prizepicks.com or just click the link in the description. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, and you will get an email the next day. Check your spam folder if you do not see it. That's all for today. I will be bike or no bike tomorrow. I don't know. Somebody, someone will be here showing up on your television. I love you. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.